What is up everyone? Back with another video. Things have just been really slow lately with the coronavirus and everything. It's been really hard to get all the bushings and upper control arms and all that other stuff I ordered from Volvo, you know, a week or two ago, you know, in and everything just because, you know, shipping's been so delayed and a lot of the stuff's been coming from California and a lot of states are on lockdown now. So not too much going on with the whole rear subframe rebuild. Uh, I did do some painting and everything, uh, paint the, uh, the stay bars, the front trailing arms, the whole rear subframe, but still waiting on those parts to come in to kind of reveal that and do a video on putting that whole subframe together. But I do want to make a little video about some upgraded axles that I'm working on for the rear. And I want to show you basically some, uh, some, some things that I'm working on that are going to allow me to adapt these axles to the all wheel drive rear end. And also that, um, you know, is going to allow me to put a real uh, limited slip differential in the rear of my all wheel drive rear end, such as a, either a wave track, a quaif, or a, I think it's a, a Detroit Eaton, um, true track limited slip differential. There's a couple options, but basically any standard Dana 30, uh, you know, Volvo 1030, 1031, um, upgraded differential will fit in there. The only issue is that, of course, the all-wheel drive stuff is 26 spline and the 1030, 1031 stuff is 27 spline. So basically, I have to create some adapter flanges to work with some 960 axles to make all this play nice and plug into the, the all-wheel drive stuff. So let's get into the video. I'll start showing you guys what I'm designing, some of my ideas, and uh, how I'm going to make this happen. So I ripped apart the rear end. Uh, a few days ago, basically just have to remove the viscous coupler here. There's four bolts that hold that onto the actual housing and then the cover and everything. And this rear diff is basically a Volvo 1065, which is found in the Mark II 960s. Um, they label it the 1165 because uh, basically the rear uh, diff cover is slightly different with how it mounts up. But pretty much all the all the internals are exactly the same as the 960 stuff, the 200 stuff, the 700. That's all the same. There's just some slight external variances. But all the internal specs are still the Dana 30. So it does actually come with a G80 locker. Uh, this is the G80 locker right here. And this is all Dana 30 spec um, uh, differential like basically all the other rear-wheel drive Volvo swap. They literally took the 1065 out of the 960 and threw it in the back of the all-wheel drive. Um, this is the 3.31 ratio. I actually have a differential, a G80 locker out of a 1045, and it is exactly the same. It drops right in. So basically what that allows me to do is use any standard rear-wheel drive uh, upgraded differential, such as the Quaif, um, you know, the true track or the, the wave track or whatever. And the reason why I want to do that is because, you know, we already have the G80 locker here. You know, you can do the mod where you, I think you weld this or something. There's a flapper here that you cut the weight off or weld it or something. But the issue with doing that is these G80s are really weak and they love to explode and then take out the whole ring and pinion and rear diff housing. And I want a true limited slip differential in the rear. So, we have to come up with a solution to be able to adapt the 27, or basically the all-wheel drive stuff to the 27 uh, spline that comes in the 1030, 1031 stuff. So I'm gonna show you basically what I bought to uh, allow me to, to start doing that. So what I picked up was a set of axles out of a Mark 1 960. It's from uh, 92 to 94, and they also came in some 780s. Um, but these are the Mark 1 960 axles, and these are the all-wheel drive axles. And just looking at them, you can see there is a hell of a difference. We have a 2 millimeter bigger uh, middle shaft, and also the CVs are way bigger. You can see the difference in the size on how much wider these CVs. These, these axles are actually almost pretty much just as beefy as the front-wheel drive ones. You can see how small these are. Uh, these CVs are. And these all-wheel drive axles are the same as the Mark II 960 axles. They literally just have the ABS ring pressed on. But both the splines are exactly the same. We can see we can take, we're going to take this 960 axle and it drops right into the all-wheel drive hub. All right. And all we have to do to use these axles is swap over to the ABS ring. These actually fit directly into the all-wheel drive housing. They drop right in, no problems. And I'm gonna show that real quick 
But why we care so much about these axles is because they have this companion flange right here that bolts onto the axle. This is all solid one piece. So what this is gonna allow us to do is it's gonna allow us to design a new companion flange that are the exact same dimensions, but they have the 27 spline so that they can fit into the upgraded, basically the upgraded diffs that use the uh, Dana 30 27 spline. So I'll put my diff back together real quick and I will show you how these companion flanges perfectly fit in and um, work right with this. So you could actually use this if you wanted to just swap these directly in to have stronger rear axles, but still retain the stock uh, G80 locker because this version of the G80 is 26 point. See that fits in there, All right? So if you wanted to and didn't want to do a diff upgrade, you could directly bolt these axles into your all-wheel drive. You just need to transfer over the ABS ring so that you have uh, rear wheel speed sensors. So I'm gonna put that back together real quick and I'll show you how the flanges and everything fit up perfectly. Okay, so I went ahead and threw the 26 spline diff back into my all-wheel drive housing. And these are the 960 companion flanges. And you can see I took the uh, retaining rings off just because it's, it's sometimes a pain to get them out. But they do click in and see perfectly. But you can see these just, try to do this one-handed, go right in. And you can see they spin. The spline's all perfect and the same. And you can see the seal and everything lines up perfectly too. And there's also a ring here too. This ring presses on and that basically just protects the seal from any contaminants or dirt or anything. But that aligns up perfectly. So these flanges completely bolt right in. You know, they plug right in, no issues. And they also lock in with the uh, retainment C-clip. And again, these bolt to the hubs on here. And so you can basically do a drop-in axle upgrade on your all-wheel drive if you want to use the stock diff and have stronger axles. That's not what we want to do. We want to upgrade. Well, we want to redesign this companion flange so that we can have this be a 27 spline instead of a 26 spline so that we can use an upgraded diff from the 1030. So here is the companion flange that I designed. Um, it is still 26 spline. I do have the 27 spline, but I'm basically just using this to replicate the stock one. And once I have the stock one replicated, then I can just easily switch that over to the 27 spline standard of the Dana stuff. But you can see they are pretty much identical size, identical everything. I still didn't add the little ring, the little slot for the ring there, but these, go right in to this housing and everything lines up perfectly. All the seals and everything line up. Pop that in. You can see. So that's all perfect. I was able to basically replicate this and it's kind of a pain to get out. This also lines up perfectly with this and all those bolt holes line up. So we were able to basically reproduce all the outside diameters. Now we just have to uh, print a 27 spline version and actually have a 27 spline version of this diff that I'm gonna put in here again to test fit everything. But also let me show you this, this ring. This basically slides on. And then when this goes in, You can see that sits right up there and basically protects the seal from getting damaged from anything. So I wanna get these manufactured, hopefully in the next couple weeks out of uh, probably 4340 alloy and then get them heat treated. So that way we can get either a wave track, a quaif or the, the true track and basically bolt my flanges up to these axles. And then basically we'll have upgraded axles, we'll have upgraded companion flanges and we'll have a real true limited slip differential in the rear and that rear should be freaking bulletproof. Um, because the weakness of these is really the G80 locker. G80 locker, they love to explode, and when they explode, they take everything out. I think with a real strong limited slip differential in here, the companion flanges, the upgraded axles, I think it should be pretty damn strong, and probably the only thing that's gonna break next are either these cast caps or the ring and pinion, but I mean, the ring and pinion are pretty big. It's a, I think it's like a seven 
the seven inch uh, ring. So it's a pretty, pretty big ring. And even if these break, we can always design maybe a new case cover that has integrated main, uh, main caps. And then, you know, bolt that down and that'll help stabilize up some of the rear. But I think this is gonna be plenty for now by designing these companion flanges using the bigger, thicker 960 Mark I axles and a rear limited slip differential in the rear. Just a short quick video today, I just want to show you guys some of my findings on the axles and basically how we can beef up the rear end a little bit and use those 960 axles. But still just waiting on a lot of parts, gotta start ordering the rear suspension stuff. I'm probably gonna be going with the QA1 shocks um, and I got some ideas for the spring perches and springs and everything. So hopefully get that stuff ordered soon, get that stuff in. And then also hopefully gonna be making a video, obviously about the rear subframe assembly, but also about the uh, transmission options that I'm gonna be going with. And also still working on getting that angle gear manufactured. Basically the coronavirus has been delaying some of that stuff. So I should be getting, I'm just gonna be ordering one part to that. See how it uh, you know works out, see how it turns out, see what the quality of it is and then basically order the whole big case and everything and hopefully we can get moving on that so things might be a little bit slow but i'm gonna you know hopefully try and get as much done while we can and we'll try and get some parts in but until next video guys